It's like you have an enormous amount of power, and it's as if somebody just stuck their foot in the small of your back. It started pushing you towards the sky, and the vibration is really heavy. The, by the time we clear the launch tower, we're going 100 miles an hour straight up, and in 45 seconds, we go through the speed of sound, straight up, accelerating, and we're burning fuel at 12 tons a second at liftoff. Amazing amount of power. Uh, and uh, in about uh, 70 seconds, we're higher and faster than the Concorde, everyone. We're uh, 60,000 feet and two times the speed of sound in 70 seconds. And the vehicle shakes like crazy because it's all these pieces bolted together. And you're still pushing through the atmosphere. If you want to focus on the instruments, you have to like grab something and pull yourself against the acceleration, which is up to three times your body weight. So your head, if it weighs a dozen pounds, your head weighs 36 pounds all of a sudden. As you're lifting your head and you let your neck soak up all the vibrations so you can see the instruments in front of you. And then after two minutes, you're at about 160,000 feet and six times the speed of sound. And those big solid rockets have done their job and they explode off the side. Big flash of, of, uh, of uh, red, orange flame around your vehicle. And you're above the atmosphere. so. It's counterintuitive, but the flame goes around you like a big ball. So the flame goes out in front of you because you're basically in the vacuum of space. And then those fall off down into the uh, ocean or picked up and cleaned out, reused. And we use those over and over and over again, those, like, those big solids. And now it's just you, the shuttle, and the liquid tank with your foot to the floor. And as you burn off fuel, it starts accelerating faster and faster, so it gets heavier and heavier on you, and it goes from one and a half to two to two and a half to three G until you, you know, if you weigh, if you're a 200 pounder, you weigh 600 pounds squished into your chair, and it's just a heavy, long weight, as if some 600 pound person is laying on you, slapping you in the face for, for another six minutes and 42 seconds until right at the very end, we hold 3G and the throttles actually come back because the shuttle can't take more than about 3.5G. So we actually throttle it to 3G. And then all of a sudden, the big tank is out of fuel, the engine shut off, and instantly, you're weightless. Just like that. And you're weightless in space. And uh, your checklist floats up off your lap and starts tumbling in front of you, and the little bits of dust and, a, you know, couple washers and screws that the technicians didn't get off the floor, they come <laughs> floating up next to you. And everybody laughs on board, because it's, it's a little bit of, like, nervous relief, but it's also, it's just so funny to be weightless. You know, if, if suddenly all of us were weightless in here, you'd all go, whoa, at first, and then you start laughing, because it's so, <laughs> it's so funny to be floating around weightless, where you, you can, and you know, I unstrapped myself from my chair, and my helmet popped it off, and it's floating around and get up to the window to take pictures of the external tank uh, just before it falls into the atmosphere because we're looking for damage. So it's just so strange to suddenly like have a superpower where you can fly. It, it's, it's a magnificent experience. And it takes eight, about as long as I took to describe it. It takes eight minutes and 42 seconds from a standing start sitting on the pad in Florida until you are halfway to England uh, going uh, going 25 times the speed of sound. It's an amazing process. And I was lucky enough to do that twice on the shuttle.